that was a hallmark of San Alfano was the rotten, corny, stupid, <laughs> silly joke. And sometimes he'd tell the same joke about two or three weeks in a row. And he, it was a little bit of a challenge for the rest of us to work on our sense of humor and bringing humor to our Toastmasters meetings and to everything that we did. His memorial service, Father Bruce started out, two priests walked into a bar. <laughs> and all of us who were feeling this, this heavy weight of loss, everyone in, in, the, in the church laughed. And all, we released so much of that feeling we had. And we thought, yes, humor is a good way to start. So to start our humor for the second half of our program this evening, please welcome a recent area governor, Joy Kelly. Thank you, Grace, and good evening, fellow Toastmasters and guests. I walked into my first Toastmaster meeting in September of 2008, and I was greeted by three dirty old men. <laughs> they really were a dirty old man. But Sam Alfano, David Heidelberger, and Colin Gordon. Are you here tonight, Colin? No. He sends his regards, though. I was also welcomed by Carol Dozy, <clears throat> Shannon Miller, Buck Woolery, Billy Joe Starr, the stalwarts of Club Five. And I was moved. I had no idea what Toastmasters was about. But I was very moved and I was entertained right away. I love that we have a joke master right away. Billy Joe, you led the first joke that I ever heard at Toastmasters. And I speak regularly about health and fitness, which is not a fun topic. I always wanted to be a good joke teller. And so right away I thought, oh, this is a place for me. So Billy Joe told the joke that I still tell. And then I listened to it. Sam, who always raised his hand to be the joke teller. <laughs> and I thought it was charming. I had no idea that he had been telling these jokes before. <laughs> so the, the first joke that Sam ever, ever told, I laughed uproariously. And the entire club, of course, looked at me because <laughs> laughing and laughing. Many of you have probably heard this joke. And Joke always, Sam always told it that there was an Irish painter in town, not an Italian, and I'm Irish, so an Irish painter in town, Joe, Joe O'Toole, who always underbid every other painter in town. And the reason he could underbid every painter in town was because he thinned his paint. And he'd never been in any trouble for this, but Joe Tool won the bid to paint, repaint the mission. Way underbid everyone. Happily out there painting it, and in the middle of the paint job, it began to rain. And of course, Joe Tool's paint job began to run. And Joe being a good Catholic that he was, just like Sam being a good Italian Catholic, <laughs> dropped down to his knees and said, Oh Lord, what am I going to do? And he heard a voice from beyond saying, Joe, repaint, repaint, <laughs> and sin no more. <laughs> But I also want to tell you that we at Club 5 are very progressive, and just as, as Sam was always prodding us along, we were always prodding him along. And on his 80th birthday, we gave him a book called Pretty Good New Jokes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if he adopted any of them. I read a few on the back. They were a little bit racy. I couldn't repeat them. Sam was a big 
we need him back at, at Club Five, actually. There's a little bit of a racy joke thing that's going on in our club right now. So those of you who haven't been coming, we need you back again at Club Five to keep that tradition alive. But I did, I have become a better joke teller, and I want to leave you with what was considered 2009's best joke of the year. So two guys are out in the woods, and they've left behind life. They're just out enjoying the, the wilderness, and they're, they're going to hunt. Of course, they still have their cell phones with them, but they are just going to be hunters and be men. And all of a sudden, as they're walking along the road, one of the men just drops to the ground, just completely, as if he were dead. And the other man is just doesn't know what to do. They've never been, he's you know, not a wilderness guy. He's not like Sam. He doesn't know what to do. He runs out as far as he can run to get cell reception. He pulls his cell phone up and, and, and finally gets an operator and says, oh my gosh, I, I don't know what to do. My, my friend is, has dropped it. I think he's dead. What, what do I do? What do I do? And the operator says, calm down, sir. I can, I can help you. The first thing that we need to do is just, you know, make sure that he's dead. And so there's a pause and the, the operator can hear her running back and she hears a gunshot. <laughs> and then she hears running again and the man picks up the phone and he says, okay, now what? <laughs> Toastmasters, giving me the gift of responsibility, um, giving me the gift of learning to be a corny joke teller, <laughs> and uh, I'm just I'm really grateful for all that Sam provided for all of us. Um, it just continues, it just continues. So be part of Sam's legacy, continue on, and come back to Club Five. <laughs>